So, now our message is a final part two of this day, June the 3rd, 2018. And we will finish up uh, what we started last Sunday morning. And uh, this particular uh, topic uh, that we are going to deal with, uh, we pray that each will uh, listen up so we can all grow thereby. What is idolatry? And why does God hate it so? What is idolatry? And why does God hate it so? This being part two, we're going to go right in to uh, where we left off uh, and get part one uh, from last week uh, free on the internet. Let's pick up and catch up with us if you so desire. Uh, we'll start with 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we will go uh, to verse number 9 to begin part number 2. And the scriptures read, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. And we're going to find that, as we were before in the first lesson, or in back to find the actual uh, explanation of what went on in Numbers 21. Because this is a parallel beginning at verse 4 of Numbers chapter 21. This being a parallel of uh, what will happen uh, to you and I uh, if we don't comprehend idolatry, the image that we have in our heart which will contradict God in any area. And so we look at Numbers 21 and verse number 4. The Bible says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. Our soul loatheth this light bread. Mm. So now they were eating bread. First it says no bread, but that is bread. Light bread. They didn't like it. Verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. Now as we look at this, they had expected a smooth journey. And you and I also, we become like that. We want a smooth journey with no battles along the way. Nothing whereby faith has to be conjured up and we have to depend on the unchanging hand of God which we do not trust. Amen. And so therefore the battles come. And we have to understand though that Jesus sought a journey also as all human beings that would not have things that would be too grievous for one to deal with. But he didn't do it in a sinful way. He simply asked the Lord. And so you know one of the things we can understand is and a lot of people don't like teaching on this but we must understand is that the Lord definitely asked God for an alteration to the plan if that was hope for another way and so if an individual uh, doesn't believe that then they have not read Matthew 26 as we're going to go to uh, Jesus didn't want a rose garden but he didn't want the thorns of hell either uh, to be constantly pricking him. Nobody wants to just suffer if there's another way. Nothing wrong with an individual asking God is there another way. But once God says this is the only way. Then Jesus showed us the way. Do what he said. Look at Matthew 26. And we're going to look at what transpires here. And what we know as the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, he says in uh, verse 37 he gives a list of who he took with him Matthew writes Peter and the two sons of Zebedee being John and his brother James and began to be sorrowful and very heavy so Matthew 26 and 38 says then said he unto them now this is Jesus speaking freely my soul is exceeding sorrowful I am past what y'all know as sadness I'm past that even unto death, he says, tarry ye and watch with me. 
And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. That's nothing wrong with the Israelites saying it's a pretty hard journey, Lord. But they should have did as the rock that followed them and that was with them, as the previous lesson said. Jesus showed his Father, is there any other way that we can do this? Or is this the only route? That wouldn't have been a problem. Lord wouldn't have got angry and breathed down fire from heaven. He doesn't do it to Jesus. But instead of them taking Jesus' explanation and his example as he was the rock which they drank from, as the Bible says, the rock which they follow, instead of them listening to the rock, they decided, well, we're going to complain about it. You know, a lot of times people don't understand you can ask people just about anything. But nobody likes complainers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a light bread. That's all we got. No bread, no water. That's complaining. I said, I'm going, you know, Master, there's no bread, there's no water. It's just light bread. We thank you for it. Is there any other way that we can eat? Is there anything else? We can? Moses, can you just ask him for us? We're not mad about it. No, I just want to know if it can pass from us. And we're going to all pray while you're asking. That would have been beautiful. But that's too much like right. So we'd rather just complain. So let's see what Jesus does. As he asked, you know, can this cup pass from me? Nevertheless, he says, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh unto his disciples and find them asleep and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch me when I'm not? He's upset about it. I mean, you guys, you can't fall asleep on me like this. Watch and pray that ye are not to temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he goes back, verse 42, he went again a second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it thy will be done and he came and found him asleep again for the eyes were heavy and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words then cometh he to his disciples said unto them sleep on now and take your rest the whole hour is at hand the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinner rise let us be gone behold he is at hand that doth betray me one of the other gospel writers says he had droplets of sweat like blood coming from him, yes. praying hard. One of the writers says that the angels came. Answer still no. You know, trying to encourage him. You can do it. You can do it. See, this is the way you ask God for a smoother rock. Don't complain. You don't hear Jesus going, man, my, my heart's exceeding soft. Man, I hate this. I hate this. Kicking rocks around. You didn't see that. I gotta die for these crooks. So I'm talking about, man, you know, see, it was so much better when I was in heaven. It was nice, it was comfortable. You don't see that. He's not a complainer. This is the example we have to follow. This is what gets people in trouble with God. The complaining, the murmuring against the Lord. Who don't want a smooth ride? You'd be alive, you say, nigga, Jesus is saying you lie, because I want a smooth ride. And I know what it's like to be tough. But the Lord says, Here's the way you do. You ask him and pray. Don't complain. And so you and I have to learn from this lesson, brethren, visitors as well, to understand the image of complaining and God being okay with that is an idle image. It's not how you approach God. He's not the type of God that you can go to straight up complaining. All we got is just light bread. All we got is the church of Christ, you know. Can't have no women preachers. Man can't have an anniversary. If you bring a piano in, the Bible going to say something about that. All we got is these voices to sing. So you complain or not. And as Brother Keith taught this morning, look up at the rainbow and every rain. Remember that covenant? He got another one. He said, I'm going to destroy all those who oppose my son. He says, another covenant he's going to keep. If you think God don't forget any of his covenants, good or bad, look up at the rainbow next time it rains. Then when you have one of them good heavy rains, keep looking. There he is over there. He's still going to destroy and he's still going to bless. Because that rainbow, that was an old covenant, man. That's way back with Noah. That's so old. That's when they first started eating meat. That's an old covenant. Isn't that amazing? Still up there. Past the first dispensation to the second to the third rainbow still there. Mm -hmm. 
So right. as Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Mm -hmm. He that believes not, he's a covenant keeper. Just like your father yeah. shall be damned. Yes. It's okay. See, because he cannot break the covenant. That's right. See, Jesus told them when I called you gods in the Psalms, that's what you are. He said, because the word cannot be broken. If it was said, you can't Amen. dismantle it. Amen. You can give mercy when the Lord said we would destroy. So he has to create mercy to give. But you can't break the word. So when he called man gods, but you will die like men, he's saying the righteous, you're, you're gods. You're not the God, but you're God. But I can't break that. But he does connect. But you're going to die like a man if you don't repent. So that's why Solomon said men die just like animals. They all die. One soul goes up, meaning not to the bottom of the bottom. The other one goes into the earth down. See, Jesus said, I'm going to be in the heart of the earth three days. Everybody, Solomon is explaining, animals go down to the very bottom. See, because the spirit is worthless. Because it's just an animal. But a human being should not be in Tatari. But we're going now. Because the rich man told us, Luke 16. We're going there if we don't get it right. Mm -hmm. He even told the Sadducees in Matthew. He said, you do greatly err. So let people don't think getting the scriptures wrong will not cost you salvation. He said, you do greatly err. He didn't say you blaspheme. You do greatly err. Not knowing the scriptures. That's a sin not to know the scriptures. And not knowing the power of God. That is a sin. See, people think, well, I'll just get it wrong the law. No, he's not. See, because he's saying, if you diligently seek me, you'll find me. How many times you went to the wrong door at your house? Can anybody count the number of times you went to the wrong door at your house? How many times you go to the wrong door at your house or even a neighbor's house continually going to the garage instead of where they at watching TV? How many times will you get the door wrong? How many times must the Lord tell us the answer is in the scripture and we keep going somewhere else to get it? So that's an error. But he told the Sadducees, that's why you don't believe in spirit. You don't believe in the Holy Spirit. You don't believe in angels. You don't believe in a resurrection. Because you err. You don't know the scriptures. You won't search them. So they were looking at it. I'm just not going to believe it. I'm not going to look at reference scriptures to validate. I'm just going to say I don't believe. Nevertheless, we understand that. Let's go to the 10th verse. Back over to 1 Corinthians 10. And we're going to show all the reasons God hates Making him a different image than he is. First Corinthians 10 and 10. Neither murmur. Oh boy. Ye as some them also murmur. And were destroyed of the destroyer. Look at number 16 verse 37. You know we got to understand. If you just read the answer. You'll be okay. The answer's in the text. Let's just read it. You don't have to do no search. Just read the answer in the text. Get other scriptures to validate. You're right. And you're through with that lesson. 1637 of Numbers. Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. Now watch this. Verse 30. The censers of these sinners against their own souls let them make them broad platelets for a covering of the altar for they offer them before the Lord therefore they are hallowed and they shall see a sign or be a sign forgive me unto the children of Israel if you remember this was the story of Dathan and Korah who challenged Moses and Aaron and said you take too much on yourself you know, you guys, you know, y'all doing everything. We want to do something too. We holy too. But Moses replied to them, if you read uh, the rest of the 16th verse going upward, he said, isn't it enough that you Levites? You get to keep the temple. You get to keep the tabernacle right. The area around it. You don't have an inheritance. The Lord is your inheritance. Isn't that enough? You know, and he's saying, what, you know, if you stop and think about what did Aaron do to y'all anyway? Why you threw him in the mix? I don't want to tell him Aaron what to do. Because remember, God would speak to Moses. He would tell him, why you mad at Aaron? So, Moses has said, you know, all y'all take your senses. 
Let's see who's going to really be chosen yeah. by the Lord. If right. something crazy go down in your life, yeah. some crazy, some unusual death, and that's all the ground sucks about. But the centers of the law said they were offered before the law. They're hallowed. He said, I'm keeping them. Did you notice? I'm going to kill you, but I'm keeping my censor. Because it's what? Hallowed. It's holy to me. You're not holy. Even though you're Levite, you're not right. So I'd rather the censor than you. Because you know why? The formula for the censor is my idea, God says. My image. How I like something to look. And you don't look like that, although I made you. So I'd rather the censor than you. Now that's an awesome message. I thought the Lord just loved his children. Now, uh, people, are, he loved his children. He loved a sinner and hated sin. Well, he sure hated these people because he kept a piece of material over their ratchet lives. That's why I say, don't listen to what brethren say. Make them read it. You, you got to read that one. You got to read the truth, not talk about it. So therefore, he says, it'll be a sign. Say, make a plate out of it. But you make a plate out of it. Every time Israel see it, they'll know. Dathan, Korah, snuffed out. Platelets kept holier because God said, This is how I want it to look, and you don't look like that. You got an idol image, you remade yourself. So I don't like what you're bringing me, and I don't like you. But I, that sense of that's my idea. See, I kept his idea and got rid of the bad idea, us gone bad. Well, to me, the message is really, we, through, we can really start right now because this is it, that's idolatry. And that's how he punishes it. You don't get to make yourself what you want. We talk against the homosexual. The only reason why because he wants to make himself something he's not. That's basically what it is. Talk against the pedophile. He wants to make himself something he's not made by God to be. And makes a child something he's not made by God. So, but, but you're making yourself something when you go against God's word that you're not made to be. So you are the idol. And you may, they then and Korah remade themselves. And their family. He forewarned them. Any of y'all in the family. Any of y'all. You could have been Korah's son. Get away from your daddy. Come over here with Amen. me. Yeah. See because God's saying. You know, I'll take you. I know your daddy crazy. But I'll take you. They stayed and died. Amen. So this is the result. So now we're going to see. Watch what happens when you talk about God's people. For doing God's work. Isn't this amazing? So he says uh, in verse 39, and Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, while with they that were burnt had offered. See, the people got burnt. Censers still okay. Isn't that amazing? God torched them and somehow miraculously let that censer just fall down unscathed. God can do anything. He says, wherewith they that were burnt had offered. And they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar. So they made like beautiful plates around all. And every time you brought your gift to the altar, you remember. Dathan Cole. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I know how to remind us too. Verse 40. To be a memorial unto the children of Israel. That no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron. Come near to offer incense before the Lord. See, that was the Lord that I already said. So you got to be Abram. So I was like, well, Abram makes a golden calf. Yeah, I know. But the Lord says, that's who I'm picking. And all his children. But he, he made the calf and said, let's make a feast of the Lord. I know this. But he is the one I'm picking to be the priest. And he was through with it. That's it. Amen. So it don't matter what Korah Dathan had to say. It's irrelevant. And these are blood-born Pure blood Levites he just killed. We're not even that. We're not, we have no commonwealth with Israel, Ephesians 2. They did. But he said, just like Nadab and Abihu, he's going to get them later. He's going to get them too. So that's the thing I said. He he, in the sense of understanding is God understand. I'll get you now. I'll get you later. I'll get you when it's time to get you. So he's going to repay. He said the last to the last generation of them that hate. So if he gets you, if he gets get you now, lady, if you already got you, whatever the case is, child after child will fall. But he had to stop Aaron because Aaron's finna get mad when they, when they doubted about he would torch. Once again, that sense of was getting people in trouble, wasn't it? Woo! You not if you're not supposed to have it, it'll get you in trouble. If you make the incense wrong, it will get you in trouble. And it wasn't no mistake. You have to want to make that wrong and. Aaron was told about Moses. Hold on. This is what he was talking about when he was up in the mountain. If anybody would not honor me, 
and used the image I told them I'm going to destroy. And Aaron held his peace. Yes. You know when they had the funeral for Nadab and Abihu, <clears throat> he told the other sons of Aaron, don't let Israel see you crying. Boy, in that cold, you go to a funeral and somebody said, and the Lord was told, you go to your friend, you go up there. They say, you know, they always cry they love their family. You get in there, and, you, and, and the Lord say, don't let them see you cry. He said, you cry in your tent. He said, I want you to stand at the tent as the funeral procession go by and stand there to show what? This is what I look like about Nadab and Abihu. Amen. This is how I feel. I want you to show them how I feel. If you cry, it's going to be on. Mm, right. See, because this is idolatry. He yeah. said, that's not the image. I'm not sad they did. I don't take pleasure in it, God said in Ezekiel. I'm not sad they did, though. See, there's a difference in taking pleasure in someone dying and not being sad that they're dead. God wanted the image. He didn't want them to dance. He didn't say dance and flip. That's the wrong image, too. He said, I'm not sad they're dead. That's the image I want. So, you know, one of the things we need to understand, if somebody drew a picture of you and your hair is charcoal black and they drew with blonde hair, if they drew a picture of you and your skin is as white as snow and they made your skin as black as coal, you're going to be happy. Nobody's going to recognize you when they see you. If they had your picture, they rock around, how you doing? That's not them. Mm -hmm. See, you got to understand the image is put together by words. And when you say the wrong words, that's a different God yes. than God is. Yes. And that's why people die to judge. You don't have to worry about no fireballs coming from heaven. No. The fire will be given after death to the soul that does it. Because God said, this is what I look like. If somebody, if, you know, if your husband went and hugged the wrong woman, even if they were standing with their face the other way, you're going to have a problem. And you lie, you, you, you go and put on, you didn't know that was me, I didn't have no red dress on when I left home. <laughs> Different image. Different image. You better, you better wait till you walk around them. <laughs> Is that, oh, how you doing that? Because you don't know what I look like? You don't know what I look like? Right. Oh, brother, God help us. He says that to be a memorial to the children of Israel, that no stranger which is not the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord. That he be not as core and his company as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. Verse 41. But on the morrow, all the congregation of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron saying, You have killed the people of the Lord. You know, people will do this. One. They'll do you like this. They'll blame you for having said something against what somebody they like do. They'll talk about you. You ever ask somebody, say, you're bringing a curse down on me. You want something bad to happen. Who can do these things? The Lord said, no curse is going to be honored that shouldn't be. The Lord's not going to, just because you say bring a curse down, Peter found that out. You want to bring a curse on the woman, the woman, right, man, you are a Galilean, you with me, you're your boy. And you used to hate with him, you loved him, you were crazy about him. Now you're acting like you don't know him. But he said, I bring curses down on you. The Lord didn't do nothing to that woman. Because you are a liar, Peter. You do know Jesus. So he says, verse 42, that they say, you know, you kill the people of the Lord. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation and behold a cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. So see now Moses and Aaron, the people pressing up on them, you kill the people of the Lord and they happen to glance over the tabernacle and they see that cloud and Moses and Aaron know, uh oh, y'all done made God mad. No, they not worried about themselves. They know you, you, you messed up now. Yep. Verse 5, 3. And Moses and Aaron came before the tablet of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. Yes. And they fell upon their face. So they came up and said, Walk the congregation. Hold on, the Lord of it. Oh, let's go see. What does he want? What does he want? Is something not right. And they get down before they can say anything. He said, Get away from these people. I'm finna kill them. And they fall on their face. Now, they, now, now you just got threatened by some people. Now, here goes somebody who really loves you. 
You just threatened my life and I'm going to fall on my face. My face all in grass and dirt. Yeah. So that the law can save your raggedy life. But you up here acting like you finna kill me. Over these crooks that the Lord killed. Well, you know, if these two guys don't love Israel, I don't know who do. That's how people are when you're talking against them. But I'm going to tell you something about the Lord. He's different. See, Moses one time asked, I trade my life for theirs. Lord said, no, 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 we don't do that. I kill the people that sin against me. So, you know, you can keep that. See, just because you want the Lord to do something, you're not going to rescue somebody you like. You're not going to take your life for theirs. Man, please, you don't tell God what to do. Even if your thought is noble. Abraham said, oh, that Ishmael will live. Take my life. I'm already, oh, I have one foot in the grave, one up and down. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ishmael will live. He'll be a prince. But my covenant is going to be with Isaac. You'll see. You'll see. You know, you got to understand something. Whoever lied to you, you should be angry with them because God does not do stuff just because you ask him. He's not a vending machine. You put a few quarters in there. Prayer, love, give me strength, give me wisdom. Just vending machine. You throw a quarter in there and it comes out like at the store. That's not how it works. Oh, somebody lied to you. You don't see nobody. Even Jesus asking for things will not be given unless the Lord says, that's why he says, according to your will. It's got to be his will. This is his image. I give things according to my will. And I'm not a respecter person, the Lord said. And so that voice says in verse uh, 46, And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and remember they on their face, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly into the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. See, while they're on their face, the Lord is, I see the Lord is, he's so mad because they jumped Aaron and Moses. He already, he, the cloud hit, they ran over there. Get away from these people. I'm going to kill them. And he starts. And they follow their face. Man, you might as well get up. It started. So Moses tell Aaron, Man, get your censor right quick. Just get your censor. Get your censor. And go make atonement. Because he knows. He remember asking for him on the mountain. Maybe we can stop him. Maybe we can change his heart. Now watch what happens. He says, And Aaron took as Moses command. Did you notice? I remember Brother Carl taught this one time. You notice Moses didn't go get the censor? You already seen Dathan and Korah get torched. See, now remember, Moses is a Levite, Aaron is a Levite, Miriam is a Levite. Moses is a false person, Aaron's the priest. Who can touch the censor? Aaron and his son. So he says, Aaron, amidst all the drama going on, he keeps his cool. Amen. Another lesson to remember God has the image of order. Sometimes a woman will say, if that nobody around to baptize, we have to do it. See, you're out of order. See, you'd have, you'd have been Moses, you'd have ran, grabbed your censor, and died. Because you don't know how to keep your cool amongst chaos. As much as he loved the people, he knew. I love God more. Hey, we're going to get your censor. Light it up and make it atone for the people. Because I can't do it. I need you. Don't get your song. I need you to get your censor. You are the high priest. Go get your censor. He picks the exact person that can do it. And so he says here. He, Moses and Aaron he commanded, he did as Aaron, as Moses commanded him. Aaron did and ran to the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. See, by the time he got there, he ran to the middle. Already dead bodies. Already dead bodies. And so he says, Behold, the plague has begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead. I told you somebody already died. And the living. And the plague was saved. So when he gets there, he's like, oh man, dead bodies everywhere. Put the, put, put, don't, don't mess it up. Don't make the wrong stuff. Put the right thing. I'm not going to get tossed. And then he stands. He piles himself dead, living. And the plague, remember, it's a destroyer. Yes. Remember, it's a destroyer. It comes, it sees the censor. What did God say about the censor? It's holy to me. Yes. So the destroyer says, okay, I can't go past here. Yeah. 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 Order. That's my image, God says. Order. I don't care if it's not a man a thousand miles away. You better ride a donkey and get a holy man that belongs to me and he'll baptize your soul. Because yes. right. we're not getting no woman right. and we're not getting no Philistine. Right. We not get no T D Jakes either, because he has said already. Baptists don't even say. Mm. 
So who else is he going to baptize somebody? You think the Holy Ghost is going to work in him? When did light work in darkness? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 6. When did light work with darkness? Paul says, when the tabernacle and idolatry become one, when light becomes darkness, when unrighteousness becomes righteousness, when Christ hooks up with Belial, the devil, then we can pull this off. Till then we can't. Yeah, now you know, so that's why I tell people, you know, there's a few scriptures I usually point to. I say, now, nah, you're going to let me know if we really should have a, a conversation after these few scriptures because I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste mine because right. you got to let me know you fear God. If you don't, we're wasting time because I don't need you fearing me because I can't help you. You got to fear God. Right. And if you let me know with, with the, Q, the Q scriptures that put you on point that you fear God with these scriptures, then we can talk about the Bible. If not, we're wasting time. That's why Jesus didn't say anything to Herod. You ever wonder why when Jesus is brought before Herod, Herod has desire to see him. He thought he was John the Baptist reincarnated. So he began to ask Jesus to do something. Show me. Jesus didn't even speak. Now he talked to Pilate. Because Pilate said something. you the son of God. Said you believe this? Or somebody tell you this? Once he says something stupid like what is true? No more conversation with you either. You too stupid too. You're too disrespectful. You don't have to know who I am. You don't even know what language means. mean. You don't understand the honor and respect of what I just said. So I'm through talking to you. Herod, he didn't even speak to him. Didn't say nothing. Didn't respond. Didn't question. Didn't let him ask him. Didn't say nothing because he know you're already dead. I'm saying nothing to you. And then that's why he sends him to pot. I'm not talking to you. I don't want about why he tell him about the Bible. I'm not talking to you. You're not worth it. See, we must don't know that Jesus knows who he made. And you know, this one was dead. This one dead. I'm not messing with this. He knew Judas was a thief. He let him keep the money. You know, I know you're a thief. Call him friend. Gave him a kiss. Say, you betrayed me with a kiss? Friend? John Chris? I know you're a crook. I know you're going to lift your head, heel on me, and bust me in my head. That's what you're trying to do. While I'm washing, I'm trying to serve you. I'm washing you spiritually. I said, are you lifting your heel up want to kick me? But whatever you do, he says, go do it quickly. See, because you got an image of me that I'm weak. I'm just a man like you and I'm nothing. But I made you. He said, that's what you want to see me? You'll be crying for me at the judgment. You will be crying. At the but I will tell you, I do not know you. You have no relationship with you. Whatever your preacher told you, he lied. Your mama, your daddy, tell them just whatever they told you, you lie. Whatever the priest told you, Judas, they lie. You're the son of the lost because you will not come to me for forgiveness. All he had to do, after he threw that money back at the Pharisees, is run to Jesus. I sold you out. I sent out mercy. He, it would have been done. But he, I'm going to fix it myself. The devil won't tell me what to do. Go hang yourself. Okay. See, that's what happens when you listen to Satan. He'll get you. He'll either get you in the early run you got with him or he'll get you in the middle. He'll get you. He's going to get you when you listen to him. He's just picking the time. He's going to get you. Right. Hell, I've done enough with you. I'm going to get you. And that's it. Yes. That's yeah. what you got to understand. See, this thing is real. If, if, if you ever been to a funeral, it's real. They don't move no more, do they? You look up. You wonder why? You can let the scientists tell you why the rainbow is there. Ask me if it was a rainbow before Noah. See, you know it was no such thing as a rainbow before Noah. So if it's just a scientific water particle thing, then why was there none before? The Lord said, I'm going to put my bow up in the sky. Boom, boom, in the sky. I mean, they would have went like, we always see them. There was no rainbow before that. Before the flood, the water would come up and just water everything. There was no rain. The sun had never stopped until Joshua said, stop, I need some more time. And it's never going to stop again. Well, I said, it never happened before, and it never happened no more. So don't ask for that one. It's not happening. Right. I don't care how much faith you got. That one's not happening no more. <laughs> See, for some reason, we think God is just a big old joke. That's why I tell people, that's all right. That's all right. Just keep living. Before you leave, he'll remind you, yes. I'm real. And when right. the judgment yes. comes, I'm going to show you how real I am. Yes. And so therefore he says clearly that to stop the plague, he stood between them, verse 49, 
Now they that died in the plague were 14,000. You saw how fast? Now listen to the time frame. And 700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the plague was stayed. Aaron came back. We stopped it. God stopped it at our request. And you know what's amazing? From the time this guy gets up off his face and runs, the Bible says, grabs his sensor, puts the sensor filled with what it's supposed to, lights it, and jumps, 14,700 people drop dead. That's how fast the law can kill. You. No, I mean, I wasn't like, no, yesterday, the next day, and the next morning. It was just a matter of minutes it takes to run there and get things together. Yes. That's why the Lord said, get away from him, because I'm going to kill him. He was going to wipe out the whole congregation. Somebody said, well, he wouldn't have done it. He was going to, he already told Moses, I can raise another nation up between you. He was going to kill all of them. We need to understand something. Just because you're not dying like that, not don't mean God is through. He is through. He is killing. Spiritually, you're dead. If you're not with the Lord, you're dead. You just don't know it yet. That's what he tells us judgment. I don't know you. Yes. That's a sin. But, yes. but, but, but if that's not it, then what is a sin? If you're not doing what you want, making an image up of God, what is a sin then? Is there really even a God? Is there any kind of sin? See, when you start trying to pick what God is going to do, Jesus couldn't even do that. He doesn't even know when he's coming back. He said, no man knows but the Father. You think God don't have to tell Jesus everything? Jesus didn't know that God was going to leave him. That's why he says, why have you forsaken me? He never told him he wasn't going. He's not going to tell you things. Everybody wants a smooth ride, but sometimes it's a bump. And the Lord didn't say, I will leave you just when you're about to die. Jesus says, why? I can see. He's leaving me. He can see in the spirit world. He's leaving me. Why? He says, nevertheless, I commend my spirit to you. Trust him that you're still going to write. Because he doesn't tell him, I'm going to have to leave you to die alone. So you think he's going to tell you and me every, You think God's going to tell you everything he's not or he's going to do? That's not for you to know. See, that's the image of the God you made. He doesn't even exist. So when you see something crazy happen, I know my kids going to turn out like that. He says, I don't have to tell you that. I know my wife is going to do that. I don't have to tell you that. I know my husband's going to become this. I don't have to tell you that. I know a preacher was going to say that. I don't have to tell you that. The Lord says, I don't have to tell you nothing. You trust me. I'll see you through whatever happens. Because whatever happens to you, is nothing uncommon that does not happen to me. Because I'm saying, they said it happened to me. It happened to me. They left me. He said, well, this man, woman left him. That happened to me. So what's the difference? Somebody left you. See, we need to understand, don't recreate and make God something you want him to look like. Because that will cause him to anger. And he will move. That's a lot of people to die in a matter of, well, if it took all, that's still a lot of people to die. That's a lot of people to die, man. You know, my body just dropping. Mm, mm, thud, thud. You stand like, oh, you gripping it. There's no remedy. You can, you can bring medicine on. There's no remedy for this. This one is uncurable. So if we understand that, we leave it. God will be with us. To recognize, do not alter what the Lord looks like. Because he says clearly, they thought it good to speak against Moses and Aaron. For they're speaking against Korah and sinful relatives and friends. We think it good to speak against the leadership that speaks against sinners and their families and their friends. We do not like them because they speak against our favorite brother or sister. Our favorite auntie or uncle. Our favorite grandparent. Or some TV personality that we really, really love. You know, some people get excited if a preacher says, man, people like Beyonce. You know, but they should be talking about her. They get, they get excited. And see, this is what happens. All they do is say, you all are the reason that our people are dead now. And God, in an instantaneous moment, pops a cloud and says, you're going to die for just telling Moses and, and Aaron. They did. Why would he react so? Because you think the image of me is I let you talk crazy about my leaders. That's not what I look like. Do you think that's the same God today? Same God. Amen. Yesterday, today, and forever. That's what we're saying, brethren, because we can hurt ourselves tremendously. 
Look at this thought. God will not give His glory to another. Not a man. Look at Jeremiah 9. He's not going to give it to a man. Mm -mm. Not His glory. You can have these preachers and verses all you want. Minister preaching day, and day all you want. There's only one man can be lifted up in the congregation. His name is Jesus. Amen. Jeremiah 9 and 1. Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place, Jeremiah says, of wayfaring men that I might leave my people and go from them. For they are be all adulterous and assembly of treacherous men. And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil. And they know not me. Saith the Lord. Yeah. Take ye heed every one of his name. And trust you not in any brother. Oh my. Yeah. For every brother will utterly suffer. That means to trick. Remember Jacob he tricked Esau. Yeah. And every neighbor will walk with slander. That's how I'm not. Now that means a person you trust. The law said, Jeremiah, tell them they're going to flip on them. Some of you haven't been on the earth long enough to see that happen. Keep living. He's going to prove this one to you. Somebody you really love, you going to flip on you. You're going to be uh, uh, like, you're going to learn it's like David. I'm going to learn it's like David. I've already had it, so I know it happened. David said, I went to church with him. We used to worship. He said, it would have been okay if it had been an enemy. He said, but it was my friend. So that's when the friend will get you. Why will get you? She'll get you. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and wear themselves to commit iniquity. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he laid his weight. Shall I not visit them for these things? Saith the Lord, shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? See, you have to tell Jeremiah, you know, you know Jeremiah, you gotta understand, man. You, you think I can let this go? My soul, God says of himself. I need vengeance, man. You can't be made by me and act a fool like this. So I got to pay this back. See, Jeremiah, that's why he cries. That's why he tells me, man, my eyes were water. Man, God don't want to hear that. He told Jeremiah, man, I don't bring these people before me no more. This group, he said, damn. He said, if it had been Job, he would deliver himself. That's it. I'm not fixing to deliver him. That's not the God you hear about on TV. This is a different God. He will not share with the God. Look at uh, if you will, Jeremiah. Oh, excuse me, Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, and look, let's start at verse, start at verse 17. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 17. He says, They shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images. That say to the molten images, you are gods. Hear ye deaf and look you blind that you may see. Who is blind? He says, but my servant. He said, who the blind? My servant. Or deaf as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the Lord, sir. The Lord said, who, are, who is more blind than my people? They know me and they just are Doomed into foolishness all the time. He said, Nobody more blind than mine. He says in verse 20, Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people. Now, this is Isaiah, he's a different prophet. Robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for prey and none delivered, for a spoil and none said restore. Who among you will give ear to this? 
Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spar and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they will not walk in his ways, neither will they obedient unto his law. Therefore he had poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of valor. It had set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it not his heart. He didn't think he didn't realize he didn't know. That, that fire hit. You know, sometimes when they fight fire, especially in California, there's a lot of high winds. The, the fireman report. That fire was drunk yards away and just leap. And you got to know when to get out the way. It can be so close that say move, move because the wind comes his way. Get way over here. And here it comes. It just jumps. See, you don't know. You battle. See, you in battle. You fight. You ain't realize, man, the fire. I'm running between the ground. Well, you're going to run. Everywhere you step, it burn your foot. You know, you put your foot in the fire like a chicken, like a piece of chicken. It just starts cooking. But you the chicken. You don't know. You're getting burnt. You're getting destroyed. So a lot of saying, you ain't going to be able to battle me. A disobedient church of Christ. A congregation. Will he share his glory with the bride? Let's see. Look at Jeremiah. Said. Let's see if he'll share. Let's see if Jeremiah says that God will share his glory with the bride. Can you imagine such a thing? Well, y'all share my glory with the bride. That's my son's wife, right? Surely I share my glory with her. Do we think the Lord will do such a thing as this? Look at Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house. That's the Lord's house. And proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. That's the Lord. Now, that'll be the church of Christ today. Church of the firstborn. The house of God. Let's see if he's going to share his glory with us. Let's see. He says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust you not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fathers and a widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your heart, then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom you know not and come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name and say we are delivered to do all these abominations. In this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes Behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. Behold, go you now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people. And it's remember, Shiloh, <laughs> Shiloh was a wilderness. That used to be, you remember Shiloh? Y'all remember like, that's where Samuel was at. That was the first place. Shiloh, it's a wilderness. But also, I told him. Now, while he's telling Israel this, Guess what else is a spiritual wilderness? You know, before Israel became inhabited again, before Jerusalem, the Lord told them, it's nothing now, is it? It's nothing now. See, that place is barren spiritually. Right now, there is nothing holy. That's not, I don't know why they call it. There's not the holy land. It's not holy no more. Because he said, I broke my covenant, which is done. It's done. Jerusalem from above, Galatians 4, that's the kingdom of God. That's the mother of us all. That's not that place over there. So he says, And now because you have done all these works, said the Lord, I spake unto you, rising up early speaking, but you heard not, I called you, and you answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, and I will cast you all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not for this people, he tells Jeremiah, neither lift up, cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear yes, thee. Right. Now you know what? There's a time when Jeremiah is going to write, and he's going to say to them, even as Jerusalem is now a wasteland, 
in this writing before he dies. He writes to the ones that want to go to Egypt. He tells them, look back at Jerusalem, it's a way. See, a lot of people know Jerusalem became a wasteland. It was before the Lord let them come back. It's before Nehemiah and them, all this came. So before, see, you understand the history. You got to read the history. This place was inhabited. And he, Jeremiah says nobody even lived there no more. Mm. You know how many people read that and don't realize that that place had to be re-inhabited? And Nehemiah comes and they start to rebuild things and do things again. And then the place is destroyed. And it's nothing. And the people start trickling in when Nebuchadnezzar comes. And then you start to hear Daniel. What does Daniel say? And I read the book of Jeremiah. And I know why we're going to be here 70 years. See, you're not, you're not adding the timelines up. God did exactly what he said. I'm going to destroy it. So you go down. Now, nah, yeah, it's property. It's people living there. That place don't belong to the Lord. Jesus said before he died, he said, your house is left desolate. He has spiritually disassociated himself with them. That's right. And when he dies, the real we talking about is the spiritual one, not the physical. The people, it's just property now. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything now. It didn't mean anything then. People, that's why the law says, be careful how you hear. When he told the disciples, he told them, be careful how you hear. You know, like, pay attention to what I'm saying. Yes. I'm not going to be with you long. I'm leaving. Right. They have to understand this thing is not going to be here anymore. And then he allows Flavius Titus. To burn it to the ground. Again. I mean, man, Jerusalem was burnt so much. And it will never be rebuilt again. The Lord said what he let happen to Jerusalem. By the hands of Flavius Titus. He said will never happen. And has never happened to a nation ever. Jerusalem was wiped out. I don't think people. Man, you know, that's why I tell people. Man, you know, you want to try to talk about the Bible. You got to read it to talk about it. You got to know what happened already before you start talking. So that's why we understand these things. God says, I am not going to share my glory with anyone else. Look at Isaiah, if you will. Isaiah 42. I want you to look at verse 8 now. And then we're done. I'm not sharing my glory, Lord. So nobody. This is not something I can share. The Lord is telling us. I am the Lord, Isaiah 42, 8. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Oh, I say, I'm not giving it to a man. I'm not giving it to the church. I'm not giving my glory to anyone. No one. No one. Nothing. It says it's mine. So when you start lifting up men and talking about all these days you want to give them, you just might as well say, man, you might as well just go and make a gold statue and start kissing and praying to it. Because it don't matter whether it's outside the Lord says in the heart. We talked about this this morning. Ezekiel had to be shown that the priest in their heart had every creeping thing God had ever made in their prayers. And they had turned their back you see you were supposed to face temple, Jerusalem, the holy city when you pray. And he said, I want to show you something what they do when they leave. See, they didn't have it on their physical wall. It's in their heart. Because see, the prophet come in the house anytime. Want to visit, want to preach, want to talk about the law. So you know, don't put it on the wall. It's in the heart. So he's, God said, I'm going to show you what's in their heart. He said, come here, son of man. It's even more. He said, come here, I'm going to scratch the wall let you see. They were praying to every creeping yes. thing. Anything but God. But yet they go to the temple, put the incense right, cut the animals right, tell you, do what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. Hypocrite. The Lord said, I'm letting you know. They say, now I want you to go and get that. Fix that. Yes. Let them know. I know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. See, you, you may not realize mm -hmm. God is reading our hearts right now. Yes. He know yes. if I'm lying. He know if you mad. Yes. He know if I'm mad. Tell the truth. You don't tell nobody. He already know. You can have pictures up that have nothing but scriptures about how you love the Lord in your heart. If you got something else, the Lord you know that see it. So when you come before me, he says, I don't know you. I don't know you. That's what he means. I do not know you. We have nothing together. Don't let it be that. How you fix it? Change. Be baptized if you're not a member. First group will always talk to us, those that are not members of the church. So you can be rescued. You don't have to be like Nathan and Korah. 
What you got to do? Recognize you're not saved just because you go in water. Acts 19, 1 through 5 shows you can go in water. You can be told about Jesus, that he's coming, and your sins can be told to you that they're removed. This baptism is in Mark chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Clearly taught by John. But when Paul sees him, he tells them, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believe? Said, you can't go, well, I couldn't remember everything. No, 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 no. See, you don't forget salvation. You know, you don't forget that. There's no spiritual Alzheimer's. There's no such thing. Spirituality is more clear than anything physical you'll ever see. Amen. So Paul has to baptize them again. They don't give him an order. In Acts chapter 2, there are many even more there that are baptized by John because he baptized all of Judea, which Jerusalem is just a city in Judea. So there are many there that have been baptized by John the Baptist. But they are told, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? For the promise unto you and to your children, all that are far, even as many as the Lord of God shall call. And with many other words, he testify and encourage them. Save yourself, which means all of them are lost, from this untoward, which is a perverted generation, crooked like a snake, generation he says then they that glad receive his word were baptized the same day three thousand souls added unto them which means if they have done what some of us do walk away and not get baptized they will all be lost and what they continue in the apostles doctrine breaking of bread prayer the fellowship you know what the fellowship is first John chapter 1 of teachers to walk in the light as Christ in the light not like Steve in the light see Steve could go love you and say man he won't come back somebody pull you don't go with him go this way Stick with Christ. That's what Jesus said. That's how you walk in the light. You don't follow man. Paul said, follow me as I'm a follower of Christ. It's like a single file line. He's a teacher in school. Single file line. Single file line. Follow the leader. If we believe that, we can be rescued. The Lord asked to the church daily, Acts 2, 47, such to be saved. Paul said the gospel will secure you and keep you if you do not believe in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Jesus himself said, I've never seen men, but I can even accept somebody going against 1 Peter 3, 21. I'm not going to accept that. But I can't accept somebody going against Mark 16, 16. Because that's a quotation from Christ. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. So, no, you stop saying, so, so you don't believe Jesus either, huh? Well, no wonder you don't believe Peter, me and no one else. But Peter says in 1 Peter 3 21, a like figure went to baptism is also not saved. You, you're not going to find no denominational preacher going to say baptism is saved. And see, now you got to say everybody that didn't get it is lost. Grandma, great grandpa. So you're going to believe him and, and you really think that God going to love you. And you took a man's word. See, the image creates from the mouth. So my mouth draws an image of a God that says one thing and lies and does something else. See, that's what's going to make God angry off the top. Because he said baptism saves. So you can't come back later. Because see, in Acts 19, they would have just come back and said, well, okay, Paul, we got it now. Well, we already been dipping. You ain't got to dip us again. Paul said, no, nah, I got to baptize again. Because you're not in. Because I've just drawn you the image of what he looks like. Now when you say, yeah, he looks like that. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts chapter 8. The eunuch has to say that. Then I can baptize you. Now you in. Because the Holy Ghost does the work. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's the church. Colossians 1, 18. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. Whether you're Jew or Jesus. I see that you have to leave Judaism. To Christianity. The Gentile has to leave false teaching to come to a shrine. There's only one Christianity and there's no other. All come together into one Christ. So why would you be given a pass card to just switch through osmosis from yours? There's got to be that way. There's only one way. So who is this Christ? Well, what does Peter say about him? The life figure went out to even baptism is also now saved us. So why are you worried about the thief on the cross? He said, nah. When Peter writes that, the thief is dead and buried. Yes, so why are we discussing him? Right. He says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Why are you arguing the wall? He says, it's not the wall. It happens in wall. But the answer of a good conscience, that's your soul, toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, meaning what? Well, that's what you're emulating, Romans 6, 1 through 10. And who is he that makes him so somebody? He's at the right hand of God in heaven, which we never going to be. Amen. He's over all principalities of power and anything that you can think about. Yes. I think that's enough said. And so what does he tell us? 
be thou faithful unto death. He says to the saints, the devil will cast some into prison. Some. So that's not to the unrighteous. That's to the saints. Some of you in the prison. You have tribulation ten days. Not nine and a half. See, Satan is wise. He's not going to, it's nine, nine and three quarters. Push it to ten. All ten days. I want all my ten days. He's going to test you to prove you're going to back out on God. But Jesus said, don't run. He says, be faithful unto death. You see that what I said. See, the devil don't have to test his own children because they already is. Yes. You don't have to ask. You ever ask one of your children come from school? Are you my child? I think you crazy. But the devil has to test us because he can take us from the Lord. Mm -hmm. We believe that God will rescue. We baptize today. Don't delay. See, you know, one of the things God said about the Lord's church, we don't baptize people for normal. You might go to church in Corpus Christi or something. We say, Amen. I need no number. We got the number one. His name is Jesus. That's all we need. The denominational world draws members because they need people and bodies and money. We just need Christ. Your baptism saves you and you only. And it means nothing else other than we glory that there's a new child in the kingdom. If we never see you again, we're hoping you go to church and honor God. It has nothing to do with you being with us. But we do know if you don't get baptized that you're lost. And there's no hope. So if you believe that, the opportunity is yours. But if you're here, you're a member of the church. Don't give up. Turn to the Lord. If something's troubling your spirit, bring it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Don't try to badge yourself. You can't. Because God will rescue. Come now, by the devil. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you watching the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace to His heart? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you promised it's spotless or lay white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?